Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fast Charging with b and I am Bear, that's and Brian. Brian. Yeah, that's him. What I don't do you, know why he does I, that. He does not intro different every time. Every time, because I want to be different. I don't want to read a script. But today we're going to talk about BYD and whether or not they are doomed. They are the last car manufacturer on our list that we are ranking and rating and deciding whether or not they will have a future or they will go get the guillotine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, so Brian. The, take it away. Yeah. So in uh, in the U.S., they're only showing one model, the Han EV, and it looks nice. It's not necessarily available for sale just yet. They do have a showroom in Los Angeles, and I know the cars drive because we followed one. And we got stuck in traffic, didn't get there until they closed, and an employee uh, drove out in one, and we followed it for a bit. So I've got some stalker footage somewhere I haven't used. So, do you know who BYD is? Tell me. They're a, mostly a battery company, one of the bigger ones in the world, and they make also a lot of cars. They're the second or third biggest uh, electrified manufacturer, if you count the, you know, hybrids. Yeah. But they Brief, do sell... Briefly, lot. let's touch on that. Uh BYD is often advertised as the number one electric car manufacturer in the world, but m the majority of their electrification is hybrids and plug-ins and not actual full electrification. Yes. I'll, I'll leave it at that. And they also um, sell electric buses, which are on the road around the world already. In 2022, BYD announced that it had sold 641,000 EVs in the first half of the year. But again, that includes the hybrids. Overtaking Tesla. Eh, except... Not digital. really. Not really. Yeah. Uh, for fun, I went ahead and looked at the European site, which shows a lot more models. It shows you what's actually being sold on the roads now throughout Europe. And... These are good looking cars. They're capable. They're reasonably popular. They haven't made huge, huge inroads yet. Oh, actually, let me double check. Are they? Yeah, I think they are already being sold in Europe. And they're, they know how to build these cars. So uh, I, what I haven't seen is many, um, many reviews. So I just went to Top Gear, and I looked at their review, and they gave it good marks. I think three and a half stars, uh, which is a pretty consistent with other reviews I saw around. Um, it is, yeah, a lot more... Uh, it, it's, it's fine. Uh, they, they've got... They're doing fine, I guess. So with that limited information... Uh, what would you like to give it in terms of engineering, having never seen one? Yeah, it's, it's just, I'm too limited on it. I know that uh, they've been accused. I, were they the one? No, it was Neo that was accused of like stealing like the Model S design. The, the, the Han, was it the Han? Mm -hmm. um, one of them looked uh, very similar to uh, the Model S. Um, yeah, I can see it. It also yeah. looks, from the front, it also looks a bit like the uh, Ionic 6. Yeah, a little bit. A little. Yeah, yeah. But this came out before the 6, so... Yeah. I, I, I couldn't say that that's... Uh, yeah, yeah. A stolen so, one. Yeah, it, the Han definitely has a, a resemblance, because it, it is a bigger vehicle, I believe, than the 3. Yeah. So for engineering, what do you? what is your uh, completely wild, blind guess? Um... I've got to. I've got to stick it. Uh, I'm going to give it a six. I know that they do okay on the range. Uh, they've got. They've got a little bit of power to them. N not a ton, but you know, 4.6, uh, which is their zero to 60 uh, miles per hour. Uh, you know, it's it's not horrible. It's decent. It's better than most gas cars. So they got something going on there. Um, 400 kilometers WLTP, uh, but combined, I get uh, that's their combined in the city. They're 528, so it's decent. It's all-wheel drive, also. 
So, yeah. I'm and and, and that model is catered to the European market, which is not as range sensitive because they do have very good charging network uh, built out already. And they've also, and also everything's just closer together. The population density is much higher. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, the Han in the U.S. is 3.9, and the range is 602 kilometers. And that's not combined. <laughs> mm. 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 Okay. Uh, so we're giving them a seven and a six. Now let's talk about demand for the models that they sell. They are more affordable. One of the reasons that they're able to sell in Europe at a better deal is because the U.S. has a, an import tariff on these vehicles at 28%. That makes them not cost competitive. If they build a factory, which seems like the sort of thing they would probably want to do, um, it is reasonable to assume that they would be able to address this market. So on this one, what I did is I pulled up this awesome chart that I love to show that compares... What's that sound? Oh, really? I turned on my AC unit. All right, all right. <laughs> we're, we're very close to done. Um, Woo, it's, I'm very close to... <laughs> done. So if you look at this chart, you'll see that uh, as, which, as the price which, goes down, this is on the Tesla Roddy article about addressing uh, okay. the market. Got it. There's a chart from Twitter from user Matthias Fons, where you see as the market, as the price decreases, the total addressable market increases sharply. And this 40-ish thousand range is where BYD hopes to be and under. So I think in terms of demand, I think they're in a very strong position. Um, maybe not in the U.S., but we're talking about these companies globally, and the U.S. is... To my surprise, I just found this out, only one country. I thought it was the whole world, but apparently that's a uniquely American way of looking at things. Didn't know that either. So uh, in terms of demand, I'm going to give them a nice high score. I'm going to say eight. Yeah, I, I think I think they're, yeah, I think their demand is very high. They do sell a lot. Uh, very well known outside of the U.S. When they come here and they build a factory, um, if they've got the Chinese project managers, the factory would be done in two weeks and they'll get moving real soon. So I'm going to give them a nine. I, I don't think that's unreasonable at all. Cost controls. So they are profitable. Now, this gross margin that we're looking at here includes things like battery sales and uh, plug-in hybrid sales. But... We have to assess them company-wide. If selling EVs is only part of their business behind other things, I say in terms of cost controls, they got it dialed in. I, I believe I'm looking like an eight or a nine on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a nine. Yeah. I, I, gonna, I, I, I wouldn't even touch that eight. Yeah, I'm going to go nine as well. You convinced me, okay. Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear. If that is your real name. Oh, absolutely. Totally. Cash on hand, 10 billion. Hmm. 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 Not as strong as I would have liked to see. Hmm. Uh, that is uh, an uncomfortably but, small amount of money if they wish to build new factories in new countries. But you're missing something. What am I missing? As you look at this chart, uh, it was hmm. just, just a mere... Uh, a mere two, two years ago, two, two years ago, they were at two yeah. billion and Boy. they have quadrupled that in the last uh, two and a half years, not even two and a half years. Wow. So that that's a world of difference. Wow. That is I mean, like we, good... we were looking at Hyundai several several weeks ago and they hit uh, 15 billion 10 years ago or, or it was 20 billion and they only managed to go up. About five, five billion. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. That's right. That's a good catch. So I guess that will upgrade my opinion on their cash on hand. I'm going to give them a six. I'm going to go a little, I'm going to go with a seven just because of how much they've increased it just in the last two years. All and, reasonable. I think. Yeah. Now, now comes the fun part, the roadmap. They're doing things that are pretty unique 
BYD scraps the spin-off chip unit. Side, they were going to spin off their chip division, and they decided, you know what? Nah, uh, we're restructuring to tap the electric vehicle market. We need our own chip design in-house. So they have chip design. They're doing it themselves. They are currently partnered with NVIDIA for their autonomous program. But on the next one we see, um, they are looking to independently uh, develop their own intelligent driving chip. This is a level of vertical integration that is very uncommon in anything, let alone automotive. And the last big part of the roadmap is they're one of the top battery manufacturers in the world. Number three, they made, as of 2022, 12% of the world's batteries ahead of Panasonic. And Panasonic makes a lot of batteries. Yeah, yeah. Where's, so, Doris, where's Doracell on that? <laughs> An Energizer, where's the bunny? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, this is just car I batteries. know, I know. It's yeah. a joke. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. There, that whole uh, thing with the semiconductors—the fact that they're making their own chips. Um, even Elon Musk has said that that's not something that Tesla's really looking into because of really what's required with the foundry and the billions oh. of dollars. Well, uh, BYD is still not manufacturing the chips; they are designing them. So they create the architecture, but they don't actually build them. So that's exactly okay. what Tesla has done. Okay. They're just tapping into uh, chip design experts in China who can't or won't uh, work for chip fabs outside the country, I'm guessing. Um, but they are, they've got all the pieces in place. How compelling are the cars? I'm not sure. But the cars are getting better, I'm sure. All cars, by all makers, are still in their early days in EVs, and we will see big improvements. So for roadmap, I've got to give them, I've got to give them a nine. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with that one either. Boy, we might have it, a new, a new leaderboard expert here. I'm just gonna no, they're they're engineering. We couldn't give them a rating because we didn't know anything. Oh. That's so, true, but but we did give them a rating. Well, we couldn't give them an honest rating. I mean, they could be higher, but um, I mean, their their cars. If you want to put in the engineering is is part of the style, it, it is kind of slacking. I mean, it's not it's not inspiring. It's not inspiring. The Han, I think, looks nice. Uh, yeah, and... but that, that that's it. You said it right there. It looks nice. Yeah. It doesn't really, I mean, none of GM's cars make me super giddy either. Whoops. How did I goof that? There we go. So, Brian, what makes you giddy? Mm, uh, trying to think of a car that makes me giddy. I, guess <laughs> oh, I, I, I wasn't asking about a car. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's different. Yeah, that's uh, awkward, so, huh? BYD, indeed, the new leaderboard uh, at the top 79 three points ahead of general motors who scored a 76 um, this number does not surprise me i think it is pretty clear that they are doing all the right things they're already selling the buses in other countries um, it's gonna work i think it's just plain gonna work yeah Agreed. Agreed. And I, I, I'm totally cool with the two numbers there, BYD and GM at the top there. Yeah. I mean, and, and Sandy Monroe had told me in an interview we did uh, in uh, November, I think I said, who is globally, who's going to be number because BYD, BYD, it's going to, they're coming, they're coming fast and they're doing all the right things. The fact that they have their own batteries in house means they can control the supply, control the costs. The fact that they're already a profitable company means they can grow. The fact that they're adding stacks of cash every year and growing quickly while still growing, amazing. I think they've got all the pieces and they are one to wa watch out for. Agreed. You know what that means? We have finished this. Yeah, it means we got to thank our patrons who get uh, all kinds of great benefits sometimes, but uh, most of all, uh, we get the benefit. 
We get to stay on the air because they help us so much, and I appreciate that. It's uh, invaluable and, and appreciated. Yes. I'm going to give out another ditto to that because this is exhausting. These, uh, oh, okay. For the Brian, curious, for Brian the curious, me out. we shot seven of these back to back <laughs> because I'm going out of town. I'm out of town as we speak. If you enjoyed the series, tell us what vehicles we should do more of. And of course, we'll look at our viewership and see if it actually worked or if we just wasted a lot of time. But hey, man, we're here for whatever. Yes. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this uh, series. And if you got any suggestions for other series, shoot them at us and maybe we'll knock that out, too. In, a, in one morning or afternoon. All right. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.